What is up, everybody? We are here with another episode of Triple KO, and we got, you know, myself, Justin Wong, Mr. Max with the awesome Mars Capcom 1 shirt, and also, I mean, we got Mr. Matt McMuscle, who just came back from Miami from the beach. How is everyone doing? Uh, I, there's a snowstorm in Montreal, so I'm trying to keep the, the in spring in April, so I'm trying to keep the summer vibes going. I'm trying to think positive. Yeah, that's a, that's a big polar difference you know the sweet ass <laughs> miami to the chill of canada uh yeah. hi guys i'm doing good i'm doing good there's, yeah. a, there's too much stuff happening all at once still yeah and that's you, just how life is are you feeling okay max because kenny omega was just like where's max i love max and we're like no yep. he's sick he's sick dude just just to give you a perspective on how wild that is and by the way i have to like get kenny omega in some way like into my house or something like that you know when we <laughs> eventually stream together um the my family is bouncing back and forth between sick i got a little bit of it i got it from my daughter my daughter got better she got sick again now my wife is sick or my wife was sick now she got sick again so i'm taking care of her over the past couple of days it has been insane so it's like knocking on wood i haven't gotten sick again mine only lasted like three days and i got better so it's like ah oh, god damn it i've been sick the majority of this year already Y'all keep parrying the sickness and it keeps bouncing to each one of you. Certainly the does. combo is just endless when it comes to it. It's just really impossible to, yeah. to just bat battle it all. But eventually everyone will become, you know, immune to all these different types of sickness. That's just the the way of life, especially when raising a kid. You just have to get sick with them. Like, yeah, if you time, if you love getting sick, yeah. you should definitely have children. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, right? But we have a lot of fighting game news. Um, there's lots of things to talk about. And, I mean, did you guys watch Red Bull Kumite at all? I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, I saw, like, mostly clips and stuff like that that was happening on Twitter. I saw L.I. Joe being mean to Me everybody. <laughs> L.I. Jerk. They call him L.I. Jerk. Um, I, it was really <laughs> interesting because um, I was part of commentary. And the way they structured the tournament... They wanted to have a story. So it was kind of like, okay, everyone has to be acting and everything. And I think it turned out really well because Rob TV was like the battle king. And this is his tournament. Z was like kind of like the agent to get everybody, even though he's like a taxi driver. Uh, and Joe, I mean, he was the bodyguard. And I felt like they, they, ke they kept in character for 12 hours straight. Um, it was beautiful. And obviously all the players... We're really good but then and also i mean i think the only thing that was a lot of people were like kind of had like oh man it kind of was whack was like a lot of five o's mm. and and it feels like that's kind of seems like what street fighter 6 has become because all these players are world-class players but why are they getting five o'd completely by just by different players right um and it seems like maybe the balance it might be that time where we need a season two possibly or or another character to kind of shape up uh, or shape up the meta, and I mean, we're still waiting for that one character, right? Was it? Was it? I have to ask. Was it five O's in terms of how the game is, or five O's in perspective of the players that were being matched with other players? Where mm -hmm. there was like, there's obviously that happens all the time with tournaments. There's like an imbalance where it's like, all right, this person either sometimes just gets an easy streak where they have no competition on the way through, or sometimes people just have their number and they don't lose oh. to them. It's was, a lot of 5-0s. I mean, like, Punk versus Mena, that was a 5-0. Knuckle Dew versus Mena was another 5-0. Even Big Bird versus uh, Tokido, that was a 5-1. Um, but it was a lot of 5-0s and a 5-1s. I think there were the only there was only, like, maybe three, four matches that was, like, 5-4. Yeah. Or 5-2 or 5-3. Or but most of the matches in general were just 5-0. Five one. It's it was kind of insane actually. Yeah, so, like any repetitive pattern like that, there's something up, you know? Yeah. I I do think so. Maybe the mechanics, uh just the guessing game is a little bit too strong, not enough defensive uh measures, defensive mechanics, but maybe season two could fix that. Uh, or maybe Akuma. We had the Akuma trailer that came out recently. And I mean, we didn't. We only saw a CGI trailer, but was is the stage that Akuma was kind of like punching in the background? Is that from his Alpha stage? I, I it believe, certainly right? is supposed to be referencing Alpha too. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, oh, we talked about the Akuma trailer. No, we didn't. Like, we just, it came <laughs> at that not. perfect time where we had already recorded and then we had Kenny on the show. So I was like, yeah, we talked about it. It's like, no, but now we're getting to the point where it's like, it seems like Akuma is going to be A, playable in Japan. Yeah. Yes. Uh, ahead of everybody. And B, it's like, maybe he's dropping in May. I think it's uh, a high it's, likelihood. Uh, yeah, yeah, because the like, battle pass kind of leaked a bit early, or something like that, right? It was like the date was kind of I found out about that. This month was Monster Hunter's battle pass. Maybe next month right. is is Akuma. Um, I mean, Akuma looks like he's from Monster Hunter. He's playable in Monster Hunter <laughs> as well. But yeah, like there was this like April's Fools thing that Capcom Japan tweeted. But it w- but we think of it, of it as April Fools. But I don't think Japan do does April Fools. And a lot of people in America was like, oh, this is April Fool's. They're saying Akuma's playable in Japan. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, but it's actually true. He's playable um, from May 1st to May 6th at, the, at a special Capcom event, kind of like a localization. And they're referencing it. Like, it's like I asked my friend Boz. I was like, hey, how far is this venue that they're having? It's like 2.5 hours away from Tokyo. Hmm. Um, so it's really far. Like, you have to... Really make the trek to go out there. It's kind of like Tekken 8 story mode where they go to like that kind of like the that forest. Um, it's, it's that's how far uh, this uh, playable Akuma is. It's like it's like you have to travel the world and go the extra distance to, to like be the first to fight Akuma. And even then, it's like you can't go straight to Japan where the airport is. No, you have yeah, to you can't. Yeah, it's too, it's it too definitely it definitely should be in a dank cave. Yeah. Like a candle, it should be, be in like, a candlelit cave. You have to be escorted in to like the PlayStation 5 where Akuma's playable. But like, it's like on a CRT, though. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like on and, a generator. Yeah, it got me a little salty because I actually am leaving Japan May 1st. Oh! And, and I'm like, my flight's at 4 p.m., though. Now, the real question is do you think I could make it? <laughs> <laughs> I would assume <laughs> that if it's if the character is going to be playable, Justin, just in general, if the character is going to be playable at an event, that all the other Street Fighter characters have been playable in some way for like preview form, and this is like yeah. the most popular one. So if That's it's not true. at this Japanese event, it might be within like a week before or after. Yeah, maybe there's going to be hands on yeah. in some way somewhere in the United States, <laughs> or I, if. <laughs> You have a contact at Capcom. Maybe you can give a uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, and say, "Can I get like an hour before I That's leave a, Tokyo?" That type maybe. of thing. Maybe can I squeeze Akuma for an hour, bro? <laughs> yeah, but I got I got a flight at four. Just let me get one hour, and we're good. That's it. <laughs> but I, I guess based off he's playable uh, from May first to six. We I guess we can expect a trailer this month, possibly, right? Because they probably would want to do a trailer before playable. True, like the footage. I'd like to think might get released unless it's one of those events where they're like now no footage allowed type thing but we'll see yeah yeah, yeah I, I don't so, know right? what that that would be like at this specific event I don't know if this event's going to be you know televised which is the, probably the wrong term in the Cell phones. modern day <laughs> if it's going to be streamed or anything like that hmm. mm, maybe not because uh, I feel like most localization tests um, they don't really do any type of recording uh, it's kind of it's kind of like a lot of Jap- Japanese localization tests so it might be you might we might see the the crappy cell phone camera footage uh, from past it takes events. Me back. Takes me back, right? So it might be one of those situations. But really excited, Akuma's coming out, and I mean CPT is going to be announcing something in June uh, when like the the first balance patch probably will come around June. So lots of exciting news because we have a little baby one. So I mean that's Street Fighter right there, and we also have a new character. ABBA for Guilty Gear Strive. Did anyone play ABBA? I didn't get a chance to play ABBA yet. I checked out her trailer, and yeah, I she, she seems like she's one of the most like highest damaging characters in the game in general, and I'm kind of glad that they kept her um, I'd say design just not her not her gameplay design, but at least her physical design very yeah, similar, very traditional, right? Nothing, nothing really changed. They didn't flip it a 180 like they did with uh, like Alfelt or something like that. Or, or um, testament. Yeah. Yeah. So the the crazy, you know, like super rugged sort of like uh, psycho inmate girl is is fully intact, and I kind of love that they went hundred percent with that. 
Yeah, but I, I'm I'm of the opinion of people are like, why do we have three characters now that look very similar across a bunch of different franchises? So Jun in Tekken and then uh, Chizuru in KOF uh, 15. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's just the hairband, though. It's just that's kind of what like nobody wears these but these characters. Yeah. And I, I kind of prefer the old ABBA, like just with the red hair and like, yeah, being a little bit scruffier and something. But still, it's still overall like sick trailer though i haven't i haven't had a second to uh boot her up though i was i was finishing some i was i was actually ironically playing going back to tekken uh for a bit and like just that closing out some stuff there is also my story too uh, yeah. I, I had a chance to like go, jump back into tekken like recently and there's all these updates to fighting games including dnf duel and i chose to go back to tekken man that's that's just mm. what i did yeah i mean Tekken is still pretty hot. Obviously, the the Sage M Second Slam thing happened. That was really cool, a really big event. And I mean, Eddie did Eddie Gordo really? He came out on April first as well, too, right? Second, uh, first, Eddie, second. Like that. Eddie technically came out like like the final day of the month, right into like the thirty first or something like that. So yeah, he was practically April. I think he might be publicly available today. Maybe, he, oh yeah, but that was a For part of the ultimate the edition deluxe. early yeah. access sort of stuff mm-hmm. that they had. Um, but yeah, Eddie's I think fully available right now. Nice, yeah. I haven't tried Eddie yet, but watching seeing his trailer, I thought the trailer was really cool. They they're really going forward with kind of like giving these characters different type of buffs, like yes. kind of like a, a win buff. So it seems like we might see a lot of characters because Eddie before he never had that that kind of like win store buff thing that that they gave him in Tekken Eight. And it seems like that's kind of like a lot of combo starters that he goes with, like going from a mid into a launcher. And I know a lot of like the Tekken uh, players who played Eddie as Tekken as Eddie mains in Tekken Seven are super happy. Like John Ding, Spirogen, they're super happy with Eddie Gordo. But I think right now, because Eddie Gordo is so cool. There's just a lot of problems currently with Tekken 8 right now, it seems like. A little bit, huh? Yeah, I I just did a compilation of it. And also, because I'm also like trying to jump back into the water here. I've been missing an absent from the world for like a month and a half due to a variety of... Due I to wonder seven, why. Due oh, to seven so the Chocobo-related things. Chocobo-related <laughs> things. <laughs> so I'm like trying to get back to planet Earth here. And I'm like, so what's going yeah. on with Tekken? I want to jump in and play online <laughs> and figure out what's going on. And I got like the lowdown of what's going on. Do you guys want me to give you the lowdown of like where Tekken yeah. currently is and why the honeymoon phase is over? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like please. It's, it's done. Talk to me. Uh, so the, the they, they released a bunch of costumes. Uh, to, to some chagrin, there was costumes that were like four bucks a pop. Jin's Tekken 4 costume. People were sort of on or off about that. Uh, the big thing that recently happened was a, a battle pass. So they added mm-hmm. the battle pass to Tekken 8. And this battle pass is not identical, but similar to Street Fighter 6. Where Street Fighter 6's battle pass is not either that great, uh, but it's mostly for your freaks. It's for your lobby avatar characters. This battle pass is sort of similar. It adds some customization stuff for the main roster, but not a ton. And a lot of the customization stuff you see for the characters in the game is just stuff that's coming back from Tekken 7. Um, and a lot of it is other things like profile icons and from between the free one and the premium one, profile icons and lobby stuff, right? Lobby avatar stuff. And in this game, your lobby avatar shit you can't fight with it, you know? You can't actually, yeah. like, do stuff with it or go through a single-player mode. They're just sort of there. So anyway, in terms of the Battle Pass quality, it's a it's similar to Street Fighter, where what, we're, what you're paying for, and you eventually get the, the coins back. Don't get me wrong. Like, it does the same thing, where if you play the shit ton of it, they're going to give you the coins back over time. But still, it's like, is it worth it? I don't mm-hmm. think so, man. I think in a similar way to Street Fighter, it really doesn't seem like it's a high quality battle pass. Everyone's doing this Fortnite thing, but people sort of miss the miss the mark that Fortnite does it because there's something that you people don't want to miss out on. It's so good, so I'm willing to pay for it and play for it, you know? Uh, and fighting I, games just ha- can't capture that as of yet. Street Fighter and Tekken are the same thing. I would say because it's you can get gear for the main fighters, that kind of makes it automatically a bit better than Street Fighter 6's. Mm. For sure. Where that that yeah. comes so it's, few and far between. To me, it's like, and it's like, not there's not a ton of stuff, but there's some things. Oh, yeah. Um, To me, it's like, 
column A, column B, because in Tekken, it's like, okay, we get some customization items, not a ton for our characters. People bitched like crazy for years, complained to Harada that like, hey, can we get DLC of customization items? Hey, can we get DLC of costumes and characters and stuff? And Harada would say for forever, that's too hard to do. We're going to focus on making characters. Sorry. So that's what they that's what they spent their time on. But I think people sort of forget that throughout the entirety of Tekken 7's lifespan, there's a massive bitching from a ton of people. Let us buy more stuff for customization. Let us buy more costumes. And they never did it. So now they're kind of doing it, but they're not doing it super well. And in Street Fighter's case, at least the stuff that you can put on your freaks in Street Fighter carries over to its big single player mode. Like it's That's big, true. expansive, like, so and there's a, ours goes to pretty much just like the online stuff with customizing characters, but it's not great. And in Street Fighters, it's like sometimes it is cool, albeit too expensive, but it only translates to like single player and lobby shit. So, again, they're they're doing things in one direction yeah. and the other, and none of them are doing it specifically well because people just want shit for their actual <laughs> characters, man. Like, yeah, yeah. If Street Fighter had that Monster Hunter skin and you could put that Monster Hunter costume on the whole roster, we'd be good. Like, yeah, that'd be cool. Real. We would. We would. Like, that's... I'm not sure if you can, like... You can't flip a switch and do that. But it's not... It doesn't strike me as technically the most, like, impossible exactly. thing to do either. So. Exactly. So... The other thing to compliment on top of this, that already has people miffed just in general that a battle pass is being added and it isn't really great. The other thing is the pricing of it. And uh -oh. let me let me guess how much it costs. Anybody have an idea how much the battle pass costs? Let's just throw out like a number. Five bucks? Not bad. I was going to say like eight bucks. Okay. So you guys are like right in between. It's six dollars because uh. it's 600 Tekken coins, right? If you want to buy the battle pass, guess how much you have to spend? Oh, it's like Street Fighter with the skins. You have to spend ten dollars to spend six dollars. No, it's the same shit. It is the same shit. So okay, there's there, there's there's a there's a price. There's a five hundred coin purchase price, and there's a a a thousand coin purchase price, and that's it. Oh my How, god! Th this is not a Harada decision, right? So this is more on the what, what's it called uh, when you get hired to to specifically monetize a game it's there's like something called it's called like a, a position now uh, a, a economy head. yeah shit head <laughs> yeah no <laughs> shit head, shit. but it's something like something like um Money virtual, virtual economy or something like that right virtual okay. economist like, <laughs> so how did no one in Namco look at the blowback Street Fighter 6 has gotten <laughs> for nine months they didn't give a shit they didn't give a shit. That's that's a. I've never seen one give less of a shit. That's almost incredible, like admirable. Matt, you uh, know what's crazy? What's it doesn't crazy? end there. It doesn't end there. That's all I knew. That's I knew all that knew. there was. There's, wait, there's I, I knew there was price fuckery. I'm add what one else? More thing because yes, that sucks and it's stupid. People sort of like hand wave it, but they're like, oh, the remaining currency you have from the battle pass, even though you get that back over time. I get it. I get it. But the remaining currency you get is 400 coins pretty much the perfect amount to buy a costume mm. so it's like oh. oh but i just want the battle pass bro it sucks that i have to spend ten dollars to spend six dollars that's freaking stupid it doesn't in there the one that really is rough is that eddie just came out and fan beloved they spent a ton of money on this character clearly they remade eddie he is not the yeah. same eddie you can't do the same shit he looks better than he ever has looked i'm not I'm not putting into contention the quality of the character. He's genuinely worth it as a DLC character. He's super cool. Mm -hmm. But what if you want to, what if you don't want to buy Eddie and you're running into a shit ton of Eddies and they're like whooping your ass? So you're like, damn, bro, how do I fight against him? Let me go into my replay and see how I fight against Eddie. I did hear about this. It doesn't oh, work. Wait. What if do you, you mean it doesn't work? If you didn't buy Eddie, apparently. At, at, at the point of this recording, you can't go into your replays and, like, learn how to fight against them. Oh, like, you can't now, do replay takeover. Yeah. But is that a, is that a decision or is I that a know. bug? I oh, know. Oh, nobody knows. I don't know, but people can't learn how to fight against Eddie right now. Oh, oh all I'm saying sucks. is it's kind of hilarious that this is the same company where it's like, I'd like to know if this is plus six on blog. Oh, you're charging me for that. Well, fuck. <laughs> this is the same company that is like now. Oh, I'd like to know how to fight against this character, even though I can't, I didn't purchase him. Oh, you're charging me for that. No, <laughs> I'm like, there's, God, there's, devs, you're smart. 
That's, that's smart crazy. as shit. <laughs> that's there's, crazy. There's, they're, they're there's no, there's, no, no, there's no way someone actually thought like that. That just has to be an oversight. I think that has to be an oversight. But at the same point, it's like, damn, devs, mm -hmm. that's a that's a huge marketing brain. That's a huge economist brain you have in there. Uh, oh, I hope that genuinely God. changes, right? That this battle insane. pass shit, there's just, these are just dumb decisions, but like the fact that you're getting your ass whooped by Eddie and the only way to like practice against him in some way is to buy him. And it's literally the worst character you could have started that, uh, yeah. like in terms of the oversight, it's yeah. the character, like that is, imagine if King was DLC and yeah. now we don't, we can't practice He's against King. He's the ultimate knowledge check piece the of shit. Yeah. You have no idea what the hell to do against this guy. Like they made him intentionally oh. like, you're going to get hit by the wildest shit you want to learn, right? Like That's it's one good. thing if it was like, I don't know, Jin, like, yeah, you can do some cool stuff, but you know, but, but Eddie. Yeah. Wow. So that's where we're at currently. If you and okay, so but that's like the start of it. That's like just the monetization part of Tekken and why it's kind of weird at the moment. That yeah. isn't talking about the the crazy balance stuff. The and, bugs. Yeah. And there's there's some funky bugs here and there. Those will get ironed out. The the weird part is that like just balance wise, some of the decisions are fucking weird, man. And uh, just just in a, in, in a perspective of a couple of characters I play, uh, they effectively gave Lars a move that's inescapable, that actually forces you into a 50-50 guess, which is very un -Tekken, and, you know, sort of falls in line with the questioning of Tekken players in Season 3 and even before in Tekken 7, where there was, there was I think Justin can echo this, there was sort of a sentiment from the hardcore fan base of Tekken that, like, do the devs even know how this game is played? That happened. That was definitely going on for a while when, uh, you know, Leroy and fuck your mom and all these kind of characters showed up and they're like, did the devs even know how this, this game works? Um, so now Lars has a move that's inescapable for some reason. And the reasoning behind it is so stupid where it's like, why? Why are we? That's the reason? No, that doesn't make any sense. So that's funky. It's unsidesteppable, unavoidable. Um, also, I'm trying to think of the other one. Uh, Jesus, man, there's, there's so many, uh, in, in, in tandem with that, Eddie is also pretty good, but the verdict on him being as crazy OP as possible is still out there. Yeah. Right. We He's still don't know. There. Oh, I came back to me. Azucena. Azucena had the most abusable busted ass move in the whole game running three, two. And it was a, it was a running move. It activated hella quick and it locked you into right. position and just let her, she could just absolutely ruin the whole cast it was it's yeah. stupid and avoiding it is legit hard it's actually like oh yeah you just sidestep this to the left or something like that no it's like a micro sidestep and then you have to duck you have to like flash duck it it was genuinely difficult um they buffed it for some reason yeah, yeah no yeah yeah so Buff it. Yeah, yeah. that move <laughs> they went in with the intention of nerfing it they nerfed its active frames at the start. It starts off with like one hit that it was like a five frames active and then and then went into the next hit. So that active frame at the start went from five to one, which is great. What does that mean? It's super sidesteppable, bro. Like, whoo, you just sidestep her and you beat the shit out of her, right? Guess what happens now if you sidestep it? That chick launches herself across the whole fucking screen. Yeah, now yeah. She's yeah you can't not get even her. punishable. Now, like, very few characters in the cast can even reach her when she does it, when you do avoid it. At least before, it was hard, but you could avoid it and punish her. Now she's so far away that it's like, the fuck, dude, we might as well be back to neutral. Or you <laughs> you might as well be plus. You so, might as well do it again. <laughs> so, again, there's this, there's this sentiment from, like, the hardcore Tekken community that, like, do they even know what they're doing? What the hell's happening? So the, no, one no. of the most busted moves buff in the game it. is still really good. No, yeah, buff yeah, yeah. things, but don't buff things that should not be buffed more. Yes, do, yeah. do it every so often, not all the time. Yes, but spice it up because it leads to conversation. It leads to it leads to a bunch of <laughs> well, maybe not the best conversation. I, maybe there was, not. There's another big one that I think is genuinely bad for the game, and they yeah. they change the way um, a a 
what is it, a landing position acts as an on the ground juggle position at the end of like a heat engager combo. So before you would not be able to or you'd be able to break the floor after this part of the combo where it's like the very tail end and you heat smash and then you run forward. I forget what the terminology is, but you can still break the floor. They took that away. Characters like Devil Jin can do this big grab and smash you into the ground after and you would still break the floor, right? Yeah. Mm. So that was removed. Some characters were able to take advantage of that situation and get a big amount of damage after. So seemingly to solve the problem for some characters, they did a system-wide change. Everyone in the game can't do that anymore. So Should have buffed it. All, all that's effectively <laughs> done is remove a whole bunch of combo creativity. Before, yeah. you could do this at certain parts of the combo and choose where to do it. Now, you can no longer do it at the later part of a combo. You have to do it earlier if you want to do that. So all it's done is sort of just stifle the, the ability for you to come up with cool combo stuff. And it's much harder to break walls, and it's much harder to break floors because of it. So that's a, that's a change I genuinely don't agree with. Because yeah, breaking walls and floors crazy. is already super fun in this game. It's like it one was, of the yeah. coolest parts of it. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's really unfortunate. Justin, what could Harada do? What, what could he add into the game potentially to make everyone forget about this stage-wise? Tifa. <laughs> Tifa? Some cool, waffle some house. Cool waffle, waffle house. house. Okay. <laughs> we have, we have I, I don't know. Tifa in front of a Waffle House. house. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how this Waffle House conversation actually came about. It obviously happened on Twitter, and I guess somebody was like, "Bro, like you need to add this Waffle House stage," and and he was curious on like why. And I so I get, I'll tell you where it comes from. <laughs> yeah, I know this too, but there's I want to hear a, that there's it. an indescript <laughs> amount of or a plentiful amount of online internet videos of brawls going down yeah, of course. in or around a Waffle House. I For see some the reason, chair throwing. Yeah. It just gets fucking rowdy at the Waffle House. So it's like, dude, they should put the Waffle House in Tekken. Like, if you want to play, make a place that feels like naturally indescript, but also, yeah, this is where a fight would go down. It would be outside of a Waffle House. So it's and, a meme. And what it seems like is that from Harada's tweet, he's like, this isn't some one so random confused. guy. It, yeah. It's not one random guy asking once. He, Harada made it seem like people have been asking about this for years. Yeah, yeah for a it's long the time. big chungus of Tekken. <laughs> at, at least like two or three years, let's just say, since this Waffle House brouhaha has like started showing up. And just Harada actually like sitting down and going, someone explained to me like the logistics of this. Why do so many people want it? And then he's like, okay, listen, if we were to add this, <laughs> we would need to contact the waffle house, like corporation. We need to clear it, but he didn't, he wasn't negative about it. Yeah, so that's why people like, no are way. like, <laughs> it would be incredible if it happened, but you could just make a stage that's called the pancake hut. And yeah, yeah, yeah. people would get Flaccid the idea. Pancake. Yeah. Yeah, have Tifa at the foot. No, have a Fita at the pl Fita? at the plastic <laughs> pancake. <laughs> but I feel like if you actually had the official, like they came to agreement and have Waffle House the actual stage, it would be incredible. Yeah, it would. It would literally. I feel like Tekken. No one can beat that. Like, like no, it would. It would make front page of that. like World Star and shit like that. If yeah. that website was <laughs> so relevant, it would. It would. It would reach Tekken to a same point where it's like, oh, we got Negan. We have. We have. We have amassed an audience that is beyond yeah, just the yeah, normal yeah. scape of fighting games in Tekken. If you added the Waffle House as a Tekken stage, yes, it'll it'll make headlines in places and directions that Tekken normally never would. But you know what? It's actually when I think about it, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Like with Negan, you, ne you never thought, right? Yeah. But also, it goes back even further. Like Snoop Dogg being in uh, having a Tekken uh, Tag sure. Two stage was so crazy and weird, and like not even dissimilar to this real world thing. Uh, or sorry, person, <laughs> Snoop Dogg, he, him being in it, having an entire stage film around him. I don't know if Walt, like, but like Snoop Dogg loves video games. So that's fine. Does, do we know if Waffle House embraces the memes? I'm not sure. They might. I mean, FGC, when we go to a tournament in the South, we always end up at Waffle House to eat because it's 24 hours. 
Yeah, for sure. And that's like, but, it's Waffle House is like the equivalent of, you know, like in California, it's Denny's. Denny's is everywhere. Yeah, but at yeah, the yeah. same the, point, it's like, why yeah, does yeah, it get yeah. rowdy? Because you get like, you know, all ends of the earth in the middle of the night, the eating food around each other. It's like, it's like the it's ultimate melting place. Pot. It's, it's the <laughs> ultimate melting pot for people to clash. <laughs> So but, yeah, like, waffles are so wholesome. Uh, yeah, no, it's wholesome. I, I, I just thought the way Harada constructed his tree was like fascinating, like because yeah, he's yeah, yeah, fascinated. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like he's like I don't understand what this is. Stop it. You got to see like, it from his perspective, where he's like looking at like, oh, I want to. We want to grab audiences, right? Why are so many people interested in this? The fact that he's being sort of like publicly. It, sort of inquisitive inquisitive about this is good because mm -hmm. in my opinion if you did get waffle house on board and you just got a waffle house fucking stage in some way um i think that would be incredible that wouldn't just be a cool tekken stage it also is extremely relevant to what tekken is as a game and also uh, is likely one of the greatest crossovers in fighting game history what is the stage hazard though Oh, like what explodes or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What's the stage hazard? Mm. Well, like if you if, if we got a waffle wall stage, what's the it, hazard? It, well, to play with the theme, I think there has to be a crowd around the edges of the stage, and they just like hit you. Like yeah. it's Def Jam fight for New York. The crowd like get in on it. Didn't didn't people do that in a stage in Tekken Four? Yes. Like Tekken Marduk 4 stage. Like people they, like pushed yeah. you right. They had people push you. Like it was like yeah, yeah. a little. Fight Club stage, one of those well, stages. Would it have a breakable thing? Can you break down into the sewers b b beneath the Waffle House? <laughs> no, I definitely don't think Waffle House uh, would be down to check out the under if, the Undercity. What if they get hit by a specific area and then you just see like the chair coming out from the Waffle House window? <laughs> yeah, the chair girl, that that sick ass girl that did the yeah, parry. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine, I, holy I, shit! I imagine that'll never happen. <laughs> Waffle House would ne a, a big business corporation would never be like, hey, we're willingly, um, you know, it, it, it sort not not really emphasizing, but we are almost promoting violence in our in in our in <laughs> our establishment. Their, that's not that happening. is their rep. That's their social media reputation. Everyone talks about the violence that happens in, in there at late nights. Yeah, I it know. Is, that's but... that's the meme. But, but like if it's outside that? the Waffle House, if it's in the parking lot, that's not the, that's that's just free real estate. That's not the Waffle House. Exactly. That's like out in the street. That can we're just fighting in front of the Waffle House. It has nothing to do with Waffle House. Delicious food. Number. Yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> and I, here's here's the reality of the situation. It's not happening. Waffle ah, House would never want ah. to promote that people want to get into fights outside of a Waffle House, in a Waffle House, near a Waffle House, where a respected family, you know, diner with del with delicious food. We don't want anything close to that. That that to me, that is never going to happen. Oh man, this is why Max. you make the Pancake Hut. You just make an <laughs> indescript Waffle House. You make something yeah, else. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's, we'll that's, see. Yeah, we'll see. I you're mean, you're probably right. Hey, 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 let's let's start the I believe in Harada. I believe in Harada. I mean he also had a a dinner meeting. I know he tweeted about he was having dinner with Sakurai. I don't know if you saw that. Sakurai and Yoshi P. Yeah. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, the, the lead dude of FF fourteen, FF sixteen, and also Sakurai uh person no one's ever heard of before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll see if there's collabs coming out, but I feel like Tekken 8 eventually will have kind of some type of thing, just because yeah. how Tekken 7 was. Um, but let me ask you guys a question. How do we feel about a uh, 2XKO? The name um, is the name with you guys now? I think I hate it more now. I, just, like, I still call it Project L. Yeah, I, I forget about it because yes. I just go, oh, yeah, pretty much what Max said. Like in my head, I'm like, yeah, Project L. Like it's and this is the thing that we're all playing along with for now that this name. It's, it's been um, Twittered. Yeah, it's been Twittered. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously the new updates, you know, we, we saw that they're slated for 2025. There's going to be some betas coming around. And I really do like their Twitter, how they're kind of like showcasing like the designers, the people working on the game. That's and cool. just, they're just, you know, they're just talking about like the characters that they're working on. And even the, the fuse system, I feel like, okay, so like they showed that Clockwork is the game designer for, for kind of like their fuse system, like the mechanics and... I think that's kind of interesting because we, me and Max, we played it um, and we tried the different fuses 
And I feel like some of them, like, how do, how do, you, how do you feel about, like, some of them? Because some of them are, are really more OP than others, it seems like, at the moment. Yeah, I just, I, I specifically in our PlayStation stuck with Double Tag. Um, yeah. Or double handshake, I think is what it's called. The uh, that one just felt like it opened up the systems in a way that really made this game feel unique. Where it's like, oh yeah, we don't that, that pretty much is closer to MVCI, where it's like multi tagging yeah. in the middle of combos, multi-tag. which is one of the most fun things you can do in that game. So I stuck with that the whole time, and I just love the fact that it's like, hey, you know, get a character into a block string handshake in a guy that jumps over so now you're on the other side doing a thing handshake back to the first guy now you're stuck in between i feel like that will be very overwhelming when people when people actually get good at the game and start figuring out actual strategy and setups for it well it was yeah. it, was, it was cool seeing those quotes from um sorry i forget actually who it was but uh some marvel 2 ogs that said playing this feels like i'm back home yes that was pretty cool. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I saw that. That was Nemo. Uh, Nemo said that. Nemo, okay. Nemo said that, yeah. I uh, I didn't get that impression when I played it. It definitely felt like we were playing Blaze Blue, like a new cro- thing. Blaze Blue Cross okay. Tag. <laughs> Blaze Blue oh, Cross Tag. We were playing a game that was a mix between Blaze Blue Cross Tag and Battle for the Grid, and Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. It was like right in between there. Hmm. I think it also depends on who you're playing against, because I think with the Fuse system, it has different elements, like... Like, I played Sonic Fox. Like, um, they had a tournament there. And the way Sonic Fox was playing, because uh, Sonic Fox was using double assists. Yeah. It really felt like he was playing Skullgirls. I was fighting a Skullgirl Sonic Fox. I was using the one where I could do DHCs. So I'm playing the yeah. Marvel versus Capcom version. Um, so I think that's really cool that, like, it's kind of giving me that CVS2 vibes with the groove system. Like, sure. if you want to play C groove, you play, you know, the alpha style, P groove for, like, Dirt Strike. Um, so I think they're doing a really great job on that. I think the one thing that's really cool is that they showed like kind of like Yali, and she, you know, they, they're, they're she's more polished like the, from compared to when we first. Oh tried yeah, her out. dude, it started start, start to realize like when we got our big hands on with that game that was almost a year ago. Yeah. Damn, so really? it's been a long time. It has been a long time, and then yeah, they they're announcing that they're gonna have more stuff at Evo Japan, and they're trying to think of like. How else can we get this game to like across the world? So I do like their campaign for it. It's not just like, hey, let's put a million dollars type of thing. It's more of really just like, I want everybody to really enjoy this game and not really think about the money aspect. They're effectively like um, FGC marketing the game where, and that's the thing, even from the development standpoint of the game, it felt like they are very FGC focused. Like they're actually, it doesn't feel like there's much going after the league audience much less riot audience in general it seems like the main focused audience is fgc and everything of their efforts seems to accompany that where their big presence is at tournaments their big presence yeah. is at fgc events in general like the and considering who's making it the 10 year in history behind the people that are making it that makes a lot of sense right it makes a lot of sense that they're essentially making this game for the community and People did say that's kind of like maybe a reason why they went with like kind of a weirder off kilter name versus, you know, all the expected things like the uh, arena of champ, you know, whatever you want to call it, League of Legends fighter, you know, because all the other League of Legends spinoffs, they're like, there's an RPG, there's like a beat em up thing that they always had a League of Legends story a- yes. and at the end. And while I don't agree with not calling it that it's a deliberate choice that they're going for. And I'm like, well, it's a deliberate choice you're going for. That's fine. Like I just felt it was like random or what are you doing? But no, this is what we want to do. And we want to speak to the FGC like directly. And to do that, we just have a unique name. That's a little, you know, not the copycat. This is, this is the spinoff fighting game. And they're like, no, this is a fighting game. It just happens to take place in that universe. And I'm like, I got to respect that. I still think the name needs some tweaking, but you know, it's it definitely it different, is. right? It's definitely different. But again, you know, Riot is a is is a company that has made a lot of games that are hardcore as AF, bro, and mm-hmm. that they they require a lot out of your players, and they require teamwork, and you know, all of their games are not super easy and accessible, and they just hope that the core experience is so good that you're into it, and, it, and like, the word of mouth brings more people into it. 
and I forgot Valorant. Valorant is just called Valorant. Yeah, yeah. And and it does really well. So maybe yeah, they don't they don't need the, the and it's name as much and as it's CS:GO. And as much as like it seems like CS:GO is a super like Counter Strike is a super accessible game. Well, it's one of the original games, but it's really not, man. It's like it doesn't do a ton of like hand holding. All things considered, you know, it isn't. Mm. They didn't make a Call of Duty clone. They made a Counter Strike clone, which was like. That's that's an interesting choice, and it's huge. So, again, that philosophy of theirs will make hardcore games for hardcore players seems to be just continuing forward with Project L or Two XKO in the same exact way. Hmm. Mm, that's a, that's a good point. I really do hope it it does well because it's like obviously we have so many fighting games that's more accessible. You know, like have people get into it. But I really do enjoy the really hard stuff, the sweaty stuff. Sure. That's always fun. Justin likes it sweaty. I forgot. I do you, like you, I do like it sweaty. In its current state, your ass gets fucking mauled in this game, dude. You, you, you get, do get mauled. mauled. Yeah, so you do get mauled. We'll see how so it we'll see how it, uh, changes. Yeah. I, I, I do hope to see more characters, maybe more fuses um as well too. I think maybe having six fuses kind of like CVS would be great. Just I think there's only four. There was like, yeah, right I'm trying now. to think of you, uh, there, DHC multi DHC. multi assist double handshake double handshake was there and one more the, the, there's the x factor one the, the x factor one yes one. The, you get buffed out yeah once one character dies your set your second character is just stronger with like yeah. i don't know how much i think there was four is, yeah i think it's only four maybe if they could add more two more that'll be pretty cool but who knows um but what is this ki anniversary bonus update talk to me about that uh, Max, this, do you know anything about KI? I've or? never heard of it before. Uh, killer, uh, killer instinct. Um, so uh, seemingly, oh, kill, killer instinct just got another anniversary update slash minor balance patch. Uh, this one was kind of unexpected because it was like, oh, we already got the anniversary edition at the end of last year, and you know, balance changes and new artwork and all of this stuff. Steam yeah. version was still not crossplay. Uh, not did not have ranked crossplay with the other versions of the game, so it's like, oh well, yeah, the Steam version is technically the weakest version of all of them, and um, you know there was things that I complained about where it's like, dude, the colors that were attached to the toys uh, yeah. were exclusive. It was the ultimate FOMO, man. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that those toys are no longer available. Some of them never even came out. They FOMO'd before Fortnite even existed, man. This was like 2016 and shit. So, um. You can't get this those is like anymore. toys to life shit. Almost. Yes, like toys to life. So to me, it was like kind of crazy that, oh, my God, like, how did we not unlock these colors? Is there still some weird licensing reason why we can't get access to these? Because it's sort of nuts that you have to you had to you had to buy toys or they're never coming back. And they're some of the sickest colors in the game. Yeah. Um, so the the big answer is, oh, Steam version now has ranked crossplay with all versions. They fixed it. Ooh. Steam version is now potentially the best version of KI. Also, they unlocked all of the colors that were in the toys. All of the unreleased ones, the toys that never came out, all of that's those colors. The part, that's the part that's crazy to me. The the line of toys, like <clears throat> the second wave that never came out, I didn't even know they were going to have colors. There was an Orchid yeah. color, a TJ color, and a Cinder color that were in the game ready for the toys. The toys never came out. So, and also all the other ones, right? You had to pay technically hundreds of dollars to get these colors in the game because they were attached to the toys. And guess how guess how much they're charging people for it now? A hundred dollars. <laughs> it's a hundred bucks. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Um, oh wait, no, you spend you spend six hundred ki coins. Yes, but <laughs> yes, but you have to buy fifteen hundred ki coins <laughs> oh. to spend six hundred. Uh. So all those colors that were, you know, exclusive to the toys and you easily could have charged for them, they're free. Mm. Oh, nice. They're free for every single version of the game. Uh, yeah, Xbox that's, version, that's Windows version, and Steam version. And if you just, like, have the game, you, you like, I think, because uh, I watched the stream, yeah. you just, they, they will just be in the update. Yes, they're just in the update. Mm. Also, if you just had KI, just in general, you just get the anniversary update for free. Yeah, you don't have yeah, to pay yeah. anything for it. The anniversary update by itself, if you don't have KI, is like 30 bucks right now. But if you owned KI on Steam or Xbox or Windows version, it's free. Oh, also, they added 87 colors to the game. 87 new colors that are mix and matches of existing colors for characters. They also unlocked the level limits in the game. 
So now your max player level was 50. Now it goes to 65. That's right. the part where Keats and D. James said we're increasing the levels for your characters as well. I was yes, like, for both. I, 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 I was I had like a drink. I dropped it. I was like, wait, what are we talking about here? Yep. <laughs> what are we um, talking about? So also, when you level up your character level now, I'm sorry, your player level, uh, you can unlock new stages. You can unlock the historic void stage, which is just a straight flat back background, uh, flat black background that is in the, the credits of the game. It's essentially a debug stage. You can unlock that. Uh, it's not playable online unless I think in certain modes, but it's not like in random or in ranked it's matches. It's not in ranked. But it's yeah. offline and you can choose it now. Also, yeah, yeah. for the first time in Killer Instinct history, training stage. Training stage is selectable if you level up enough and it's choosable and fightable. But it's the same thing where it's like not inherently available online. It is a uh, like a thing that you can unlock and play. So it's like, okay, so how much do those stages cost? Oh, they're free. You just, you just play the game and you get them. Oh, that's cool. Uh, also... Like I said, they added um, they all the character levels went from 50 to 65. So you can now level up your character to level 65 and you unlock a bunch of new anniversary colors, which are purple and gold themed appropriately because that's the, the color scheming of the game. Some of them are super sick. Uh, so they effectively gave the entire roster more levels and more colors that you could add. And, uh, and just like... Go ahead. It's it's three colors per character, I think. Three three additional colors per character on top yeah. of adding the colors that were in the toys for some characters. So now some characters have like 13 skins or something like that. 13 different colors, which is crazy. Shadow Jago has a ton. Um, yeah. So they added like yeah, 87 new colors for the entire cast or something like that. Uh, guess how much that costs? Is it free, Max? It's definitely free. <laughs> they didn't charge anything for it. Uh, it's all free. Some of those, some of those colors for a lot of the human characters, because it's their skin can only really be gold or yes. purple. Some of them look a little funky, oh, but yeah. but some of the other characters that have very uniform skin, like uh, like skin colors, like say Fulgor or Gargos. Yes, dude, one or two of those Holy are shit. all three of those Gargos colors are like the sickest colors, and that yeah. one Fulgor where it's like wood mahogany in his <laughs> like <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> like. Um, it is like guts and uh, and and his armor was like sheer white. I was like, that's one of the sickest so colors. Sick. Like I, yeah. Half Some of them were are just like amazing. Half of them are like I say like like a quarter of them are like eh. Like another quarter of them are like pretty good. And then like, so there's another half that are like god damn. Like these are yeah. really yeah. sick. Shadow Jago's got some really cool ones too. So yeah. Hosako uh, had a good one as well. The the fact that all that stuff is free is crazy. Also another thing, the game's just free. <laughs> like the game doesn't cost anything technically. Like if you go to Steam right now and look up KI, it's free. The uh, oh, what? You, really? you, right wow. now it's Shadow Jago that is currently the free character in the game, and that changes every single week. Oh yeah. But you get yeah. access to the whole game. It's just free. Uh, if yeah. you go into Shadow Lords, and they they were explaining this, and you play a little bit of Shadow Lords, which also got changed. They made Shadow Lords way easier to play. Right, and right, right, and right. much Fine. more like forgiving when it comes to certain like progression parts. They're just like this was too hard. Um, and Shadow Lords effectively is the big single player mode of KI. It is like their roguelite mode. If you yeah. play that a little bit, you get access to Jago and Orchid permanently. You don't have to pay anything. All right. Oh, so you unlock them? So okay. you just unlock them. They're just they're just good to go. So you, this is all in the free version of the game. What about all those new colors and the things you were talking about and the, the, the skins and stuff? So how much do you, how much you have to pay to unlock all that stuff? Oh, no, it's free. Everything's free. The whole, the whole goddamn game is free right now. Like, yeah, it's the most accessible fighting game like ever. And now it cross plays with every single version. So when you jump on ranked, there's noobs. I was I was playing online in like the I'm like what is the yeah. free version of the game like I've never experienced this so I just jumped on and got Shadow Jago I did some Shadow Lords and I'm like okay so this is what you get like it's pretty much the whole goddamn game you just don't get the whole roster obviously but I yeah. played ranked up until like bronze rank and I was you know getting some obvious KI killers that were hunting me down but the majority of my matches were against people that were brand new that were playing the game yeah. the same way I was and I was like Wow, so there's still noobs playing KI. That's crazy. So I mean, it's it's easy it's an easy game to get in, get into hard to master. That's what it just comes down to, right? Absolutely. 
The, the one thing I do have to mention, and this was echoed several times throughout the stream of them just going over, all this stuff is free. <laughs> like, we just put this in because we just love KI type of shit. Uh, the, the thing that kept being echoed several times from James, much less Keats, was that this is the last update. This is it. Mm. Mm. Um, and it really doesn't make sense considering Microsoft's current economic, I'd say, situation where they wouldn't charge for this stuff because you could charge for this stuff and people would be willing to pay for it. People want to support KI in some way. And we've seen that in the past where it's like KI has been super generous with how it functions and works and people are willing to pay. You know, the Shadow Jago thing is the best example of that. Um, so all this shit doesn't cost any money and the game's free to play on Xbox, especially because of Game Pass, right? But now on Steam as well. Yeah. They're just trying to get you to play the game, man. <laughs> like, that's it. This this comes across as like a focused effort from Microsoft or like the current KI squad to be like, do people care anymore? That seems like what it is. They're like, do can do people actually care enough just to check out KI? This seems like a gauge of interest, is what it really does. Yeah. Because I would always say that the answer, even before these updates came out, was always yes. If if anyone at Microsoft or wherever just boots up the game, even on Xbox One, I've never not gotten players. I yeah. can't say that for every fighting game, right? Oh, yeah. Is yeah, it is true. it a shitload? No, but I mean, never sitting for more than like a minute that, yep. that's my, my my personal experience so they're always there and like i would even say when you said ki players want to support it like i i'm not saying hey, all this free stuff is great but if they were the remix colors right that's brilliant in the way that new assets are not being created the game has remixed. no new assets it was it was clear that where they spent all their money and it was on effectively back-end shit to make the yeah. game function nowadays but I would still m myself because they are new assets. I understand that, like, yeah, you know, people sat down and worked on this um, and made new shit. I would pay for a pack of like, here's the rest of the ultimates, oh, like yeah. in the future, let's say, here's the rest of the ultimates, and here's a new accessory pack. Yeah. Everyone gets one new accessory set, especially you know for characters that have very little, like Shadow Jago or Omen. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like all these other updates are make sense totally because. You know, they're, they're bounce patches. They're these little stages. It's still really cool, but, like, I would still go above and beyond. Like, I'll pay for this stuff. Yeah. This makes sense, you know? But um, it's still super cool, and I wasn't expecting that. When they said in the stream uh, announcement, like, oh, there'll be some cosmetic news. Yeah. I was like, that's... I don't know. I, what the I hell know did you what, do? What I thought. <laughs> I did not think eighty-seven new colors, and then like fifty percent of them being like awesome, yeah. and like the twenty-five uh, percent being great, and the other ones kind of being like, eh, well, they did what they could there." But it's still really awesome that that they went above and beyond with it. In in the scape of current fighting games, if we we have been discussing them on this show for a long time, Killer Instinct is actively going out of its way. To, in, to engage its audience and just see if people care. And right now, the Steam version is hella good. It's like yeah. arguably one of the best versions of the game. It looks crazy now. I, I have to throw this uh -huh. out. Visually, the game looks way different than it did before because it's rendering pipeline change. They changed the way lighting works and stuff like that with this new anniversary update. So I just saw Jago on a stage. I was like, what the hell? That does not look like what it normally looks like, man. So it definitely got a big fidelity slash graphical bump and in this version of the game and it looks damn good i was like all right all right you guys you th this is this is definitely the premium way to play ki nowadays especially since it's yeah. now crossplay with everything you know, like mm. this is the one but yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to play more ki especially your the way it's like free and you still find good matches and i mean anytime you stream the game all the ki top players all are the ki like, heads oh, are just to, like you, oh, we thank you for playing set. yeah you're trying to play you're trying to run a set they'll teach you how to play the character sure. super nice Super awesome community. So now I think um, it's time to, to make Matt jealous. Um, Please do. You guys always yeah, do. <laughs> it's time to make Matt jealous. We played Garo. We played City of the Wolves. Uh, you know, that was really fun. I had a blast playing the game. The combo system's insane. I felt like the way it looked, it felt very comic book-ish. Like, obviously, I think a lot of people thought it was going to be like, oh, hopefully it doesn't look like King of Fighters 15. Uh, but it really has its own identity and i think it was just so fun to play yeah there's a there's a couple of like visual comparisons you have to give where clearly the original gauro 
is praised and has all these accolades as being one of the best 2D fighting games ever, right? So that was one of the first things I was echoing was that, oh, you don't make a sequel to Gaoro without those expectations. You have to have that. And it seemed like Something. it was a, there was a serious effort from SNK where it's like this needs to this needs to look like a banger. It needs to look really striking and really good. And I can tell you, it does. Some of the YouTube videos, even the footage they gave us, doesn't do it justice. And it the, I was actually actively upset at what quality the footage was that they gave us, as I was like, dude, this is doing a disservice to this game. It looks mm. so good. Um, so if I eventually get to fix that, I I will. But at the same point, it is truly great looking like animation wise in between quality there's a big thing with previous kof games 14 sam show i said to a certain degree kof 15 where they're super key framey where they feel like characters go pop you know pop and they they sort of like pop in and out of frames of animation a little bit where they don't really like tween and smooth out like that kind of shit that you see in some of the older snk games that was changed in galro 2 so in, in City of the Wolves, like there's so much crazy secondary animations of jackets moving and all this like crazy stuff. Secondary like hit effects and sparks that carry shit from left to right. It's like, damn, dude, this looks great. It also helps that it plays great. It's crazy, man. Like the game is actively like so it's a 1v1 fighting game, and you know, there's there's SNK hasn't made a ton of 1v1 fighting games in the past in their big 3D era now, right? So let's just add more mechanics than even KOF 15 has. <laughs> so <laughs> many mechanics. So <laughs> many things, dude. On top of the mechanics that Garo had. Has like, already I think had. It, it has everything all of them. is returning, right? Everything's yeah, returning. Everything. Like all the brake systems there, the faint systems there, the weird like low crush, high crush moves that are kind of there. And then they also are like, well, let's just add max mode combos to the game too. Because everyone loves max mode combos, which is like EX move into EX move into EX move type of shit. They did that. So it's like, oh, God, let's just also add a Street Fighter V green shit. We'll just call it the Rev Gauge. Oh, the Rev Gauge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, they're that, like, uh, like, oh, okay. It has to have been informed at least a Street little Fighter bit 6, at sorry. some point by Street yeah, Fighter Six. Yeah. yeah. Because I was just like, Rev? Okay, cool. Because it's it seems all about, like, not all about, but like engines and revving up for the fight and, and stuff yeah. like that. So I was like, that's cool. There's like a little theme there. Cause if you just willy nilly call systems or, or wh- whatever they are and you don't theme around it a little bit, it's just like, that seems kind of random. Yeah. It, it feels but like it, a lax cohesion. It's, it's a video game. Yeah. It needs direction. Yeah. Um, what are the characters? Uh, well, I kind of know what probably Max's answer is, but <laughs> what are the characters that you kind of found interesting? I only played Hotaru. Like, we only really had an hour to play. Uh, so the whole time, I'm just like, all right, one hour. I'm only, I'm going to try to, like, get familiar with the character as much as possible. I played Hotaru from, like, the previous uh, Garo as well, too. And she's really fun. Like, her combos are amazing. Uh, what I also really like, the fact that it's like, because there's obviously break cancel in the game, like, like Max said. And it used to be only one move that you can break out of. Now, every character has two moves that they can break out of, and they're different as well. The, like, hmm. the, the move list that we had, it will tell you this, is, this move is breakable. Breakable, yeah. Right? Right. So, like, Kotaru is, like, it used to be kind of her reflector move that was breakable. Now it's not. It's her DP, and it's her, like, advancing, like, multi-hitting move that's all breakable. And that was really cool. I really like the fact that was a thing. I think the thing that really stood out to me was that every character also has a hidden super because in old Garo, not every character has a hidden super, only select a few. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, really? Weird. Yeah. Yeah. But like B. Jeanette had a, B- had a super. Her, her, her uh, shoe is a hidden her shoe. super. Is like, that King where Rock's 15... Neo Deadly Rave is hidden? Is it in his top attack? Um, so it wasn't top attack. It was just you just have two of uh, the P, oh, P power. Okay. You just have two bars and you just do it. Um, so, like, every character in this version, so far, it seems like, has all hidden supers, but the previous Garo, only select few had hidden supers. Yeah, so the, the theming in this one is that hidden super is now locked to your top attack. Top yeah. attacks are effectively drive impacts, you know, drive impact. for the most part in this game, but you can only use them when you're at that part of the health bar where you assign it to, like, the thirds. So... Top, but top attacks now can be used in the air as well. So you can so do a good, jump yeah. in drive impact on somebody. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So it's like, it's a little crazy. But also they attach um, super gauge to that one. So if you want to use your your hidden special, your hidden super, it's only usable in the top attack. 
Yes. And the inputs yeah. for them are kind of like fireball forward, back, forward, back, or fireball back, forward, back, forward, is I think what yeah. Rocks was. For, from the video previews, as uh, Justin specifically, that was the one thing where I was like, you can you can make that a simpler motion. The yeah, one, the motions are all weird. Yeah. One thing about Garo that I always loved, like that was the first SNK or like, you know, Fatal Fury or KOF style at least, where they're like, let's simplify these motions a little bit, where yeah. they're not all they're not all the SNK corkscrews and pretzels and stuff. Like it's very it's dialed back so much. So when I saw that these hidden supers, great idea. But yeah. I'm like, eh, the, the command doesn't and need to know, be back on. They're definitely yeah. easier because they they are compromised, man. It's it's fireball sure back cuts, fireball back forward back forward instead well, of fireball true, back it, half circle yeah. back half circle forward fucking pretzel corkscrew they it was kind of easy to do it, it just sort of rocks? made sense is that rocks command that was rocks command yeah what was what was uh what was o otaro's otaro is double fireball and then half circle back punch that's I difficult like that. that's yeah. difficult as so fuck it's, it's like that <laughs> yeah you're like you're like you're, if it looks like you're writing in cursive yeah, I mean uh, the thing difficult. is, the thing is, old Garo, even the old Garo hidden supers were kind of weird and funky. Like for B Jeanette, the, how you get her hidden super is you have to just defend and guard cancel, but you have to slide A B C. What oh, that's the fuck, dude? Okay. So you slide A B C, and then switch. That's when she activates her shoe, her her super that you see in King of Fires fifteen. Um, so that's her. Um, her uh, that's her hidden super in Garo. So maybe some characters might have the guard cancel hidden supers possibly because that's how it was in Garo. And Dude, that they're trying that, to reflect that now. That input reminds me of Darkstalkers shit. You know yeah, when yeah, you yeah, like yeah. want to push block in Dark Stalkers, yeah, you have yeah. to like piano or some weird shit like that. It's like that. It's like that. That's so funky, dude. What the hell? Anyway, that's I don't think that's in the game. What they they did <laughs> they did change uh, just defense, right? So the game has like it's quote unquote parries, which is just defending. You just tap back. Um, if you want to do it to lows, you press down back. You can also do it in the air. We have footage of them like just defending an entire like rising taco, rising uh, taco. like multiple times. <laughs> it's like holy shit, cool. Um, you get health back. The cool part about it is in Gauro, when you when you want to act out of a just defend, you don't like like it's not like a third strike where you strike you like a normal and then you do a combo or something. Um, no, no, no. You cancel out a just defends with specials. Yeah. So immediately as you just defend, you can cancel out with a special or super or something like that. Right. So you have to like it's good to do a break attack and then continue your combo in some way. Um, however. And this frame data almost lines up exactly with another game that has an extremely similar mechanic where you're holding back and you have to tap forward on the follow-up attack. You just defend in Gauro, and then if they have a follow-up attack that you got ready to just defend, you can press forward after within two frames and effectively do a fucking red parry. Parry, right, yeah. right, right. And at that point, it's called an advanced just defend, I think is what the term was. It's a hi hyper defense. <laughs> hyper, yeah, hyper defense yeah, yeah, just yeah. defend or something weird. And it it it's a it's a red parry. It it yeah, almost it like functionally works exactly the same too. I was practicing with the devs, and he's like, did some rocks hit, where rock shining knuckles forward, and then like hits you with his palm after, and it's the perfect two hit where you just defend the first hit, and then you hit forward after, and you catch the second hit. So people just can't. This is a game where people cannot commit to offense, even if it's safe. Similar to. Like Street Fighter Six, you can't commit to all offense because there's answers for shit all over the place, yeah, right? Perfect parry, yeah. But in this game, it's got a mega execution. Like red parries are not f not super easy to do in a game like Street Fighter Three Third Strike. You might see them a lot at high level. They are not easy to do. In this game, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see like how like matches will play like because we didn't really get to play matches we're just literally no. trying to learn the characters mechanics so i'm just so interested to see like the flow of the game yeah uh but i already could tell that it's going to be a lot easier because when you when i watch old garo and played old garo combos are really hard to perform in old garo like it oh during yeah the matches but yeah. now it's so much easier because they're like, koa like, 15 like style said, now yeah like you said you just automatically start out with max mode on because of the rev the rev gauge so yes. combos are super easy and super Super fun to do, I would say. So, like a bit different than this is some this is some places in KOF 15 where there's like actual links instead of like button into command normal, which is where a lot of the combo structure begins in KOF. Um, there's actual links in this game now, like rocks, yeah. close jab, 
because you have proximity normal. So you're like close jab links into down heavy punch. So yeah. his A combos into his down C. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. So that's how you get to your hit confirm, right? From a light in some way. Because there's no, the light hit confirms from like light attacks, which happens a lot in KOF, like light attack, hit confirm, max mode, get fucked, buddy. That doesn't seem to be here as much. Like they're trying to get rid of that a little bit. Instead, yeah, yeah. like a light confirm into a link into, now you're going to do your big bullshit if you want to. So mm -hmm. there's a different philosophy than uh, than KOF and the way the KOF generally works. I got to play against like the lead, one of the lead combat dev guys for like quite a few matches. And you know what it really reminded me of? N Groove CVS2. You know, an end groove, mm. Justin, where you like run forward with like shoulders and you like jab pressure and you yeah, try to like jab, bait. Jab, jab, jab. It yeah. felt like that. It was like, mm. oh, that, and that's really fun. That's one of like the funnest fun. play modes in CVS2. Yeah. So oh, it, right. it, it kind of felt that way when I was fighting against a human and I was like, oh, you're playing the game that way. Then I started doing it to him and he had to like deal with it. I was like, this is cool. This is sort of neat. So again, uh, uh, Gauro OG doesn't really play that way because it's so fucking hard. And KOF doesn't really play that way because there's no I don't think there's short hops. I don't think there, it's there is. like it's like I don't think they're not real short hops, it's like mid hops. They're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because there, there was some modification to this where you yeah, can like yeah, yeah, super yeah. jump, but there was it's not the same as like, you know, a hyper short hop, like a hyper hop that you have in, in KOF where you can like, you know, woo, like, you know, short hop across the stage. They didn't have that. So it's like, so how do we open each other up? And it's really about like Sort of similar to Street Fighter Six, like counter hit baiting, whiff punishing. Also, throws are on light punch, light kick. So throws That's, are traditional now. Is that is nice. the first time SNK has ever done throws like that? The first time so. they've ever done that. They've never done right? that before. At least, at least yeah. in in recent memory, they've never done throws on like third strike throws. They've never done it. Yeah, I guess maybe. I don't how how I don't remember how Sam show throws work like. Is it just like forward? yeah? Good Sam question. Show is just for, Sam show is just forward and a button. It's forward heavy, right, ah. or something like it's classic Cause, style. Because throws were universal, like because it was just the push, like the pushing throw. Yeah, yeah. I, I I played uh, 2019 recently, so yeah, it, like it was on the shoulder buttons at least, uh, you know, or or you know whatever R B L B, something like that. But but throws um, are pretty bad in Sam show, from what I recall. Like yeah, they're, they're not. They're Super really good. slow. They're, They're really so slow. slow. And they have a ton yeah. of recovery, so it's like mad risky to throw it out. They're I, meant to just like reposition your opponent. Yeah. That's basically it. It didn't really feel like fun. Sam Show was fully committing to being a strike throw fighting game. It was trying to be like a footsie game, you know, footsie is game, yeah. what it is. Big hits. This game, because of like the counter hit state that happens after the throw in this game, this game feels like SNK's strike throw fighting game. But yeah. it's it's wacky. It's like bonkers, like how kind of crazy it gets and how many counter hit states there are. There's so many counter hit states, dude, of like, oh, you're going to crumple here. Oh, you're in a massive spin state there. It's like, all right. So they definitely want us to smack a, a massive counter hit combos in this game. That's like a big goal of theirs. And yeah. and now if you're like doing two uh, EX moves on each other, there's like a Tekken slowdown when oh, they clash. Oh, that's the, the drive attacks. impact. It was the yeah, top of the axe? Okay. The, the, the drive impact of the game. So if you do that at right, the same right, time, right. it literally goes, who's yeah, going to hit? Cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, did either of you, well, no, I guess, uh, Justin, you said, but you, you didn't get any time to try uh, Precha, Max? No, we got video of her. I didn't get a chance to play her. I talked okay. to Kayane about her a bit, and she was gelling pretty well with the character. She, she said she was pretty fun. So the, the thing with this character is that she was in the sprite uh, sheet for Garo 2, Canceled the original Garo, yeah. 2D ah, okay. one. And like, I, I, you know, I still think it's cool. Joe Higashi has a little like a uh, trainee uh, under him. What I don't like, and I think we've talked about this a little bit before is just SNK has the style of creation for new characters. And when these characters have too much, th too many things and elements port poured into them, if they go just beyond, I'm a martial artist and I'm mean or I'm nice or I'm whatever, it starts getting into like, that feels more like a street fighter character, specifically a street fighter six character. So preach it now being like, I am a scientist and I don't actually really like fighting. I just decided to train a little bit because I want to understand fighting and use that for science. I'm like, I don't, 
that, that, that's very Manon. I'm a martial artist. I'm a judoist. I'm a model. I'm a singer. I'm yeah. you, you maybe two, maybe one thing, but when a character's like, I'm a scientist and I'm a fighter, I'm like, I'd rather just have a scientist character. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm just a scientist versus melding the two because the character just feels sort of strange. With that said, her fighting style, the moves that she's actually doing, I was like, these look cool. She looks impactful, at least. She she's really cool. Um, like I said, I, like I watch Kayan, I play. The combos are really interesting, and I mean, she's definitely gonna be one of those characters that, like, next time I get a chance to play, I want to play her and see like mm -hmm. what she can really do. Because look, the the footage that they gave us is kind of like we see like the little stuff, but we don't see like what's her true combos and everything. Uh, right. Because the combos that you can do, like I found a Hotaro combo that did like. 80% health using all the resources, right? Using the hidden supers. Hidden super is kind of like your CA level three. Like you want to always like right. use that to get, to do the most damage. And it also resets your rev gauge. Uh, so you actually go yes. back to zero. Uh, so that's like really huge because, you know, once you go over the 100% mark, you kind of get burnt out. It's kind of like similar to Street Fighter six, where you, you, you cannot cancel in the special moves. You can't use EXs anymore. Like everything is tied into the rev gauge they even have like a rev like push block um where you have like a little guard up like literally it's like a little oh, red the shield guard. the shield yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. It's, it literally acts like a push block where it pushes back normals and it and like attacks are just whiffing so you could probably use that to kind of like as a marvel push block where if you do that you can dash in and punish the the, the possible whiff normal possibly yeah the push right. block costing Rev gauge was interesting because yeah. I didn't get to really mess cool. around with that a lot. Yeah. So, I, I, and I think that's like the first time they also did something like that as well to you from SK. I don't think, I don't think I've ever I seen a so. push block or anything type of related with that guard thing. So, there's just a lot of mechanics and a lot of cool stuff that characters can do. It's really trying to figure out like, are all the mechanics going to be used though? Like, is right. there yeah. some mechanics that's going to be one left or two behind? That, yeah. And mm. it did feel like, especially the the low crush, high crush stuff, which is coming back from like Gaura One. I felt yeah. like that could have been simplified. That yeah. like some some of these are like, yeah, these could be put on command normals or something like that. I get it. You don't want everyone to have like a six P anti air, you know, just like Guilty Gear. But at the same point, it's like. This is requiring me to use an extra button on on the controller now. This is technically like a six. I'm sorry, a five button fighting fifth, game. Fifth button, yeah, fifth button. It has a fifth, fifth button. button. Yeah. So yeah. At, at that point, I was like, I don't think that's absolutely necessary. I think we could have <laughs> like possibly made it still work on four. Yeah. Uh, there was one thing about the top system. I'm not sure if this was accurate, but wasn't it that people were getting slightly different buffs depending where oh, they yeah. put it in their life yeah. bar it's like x factor one two and three like marvel three like if you have it in the beginning it does x amount of damage uh like right. buff and if you have it in the middle you get more damage on top of it and if you have it at the last one more damage on top of it as well too i don't know okay. the exact numbers but the dev said that's how it acted so to me it's like oh x factor okay yeah. cool so you could say that this game is mechanically deep it's oh yeah <laughs> like to the point where you're like, maybe, maybe he simplify this. Well, Cause this seems like a massive SNK push in terms of marketing and getting this popular. It is because, because, uh, English voiceovers is like, I was like, wow. Yeah. When what 12, I think the last time it's been a long time, man. And um, before that, and Maximum Impact. It, yeah, I was about to say Maximum Impact. In the same vein of what you're talking about, something that I don't think me or Justin, Justin might have, but I didn't, uh, the game has an entire alternative control scheme, similar yeah. to Street Fighter V. It effectively has a modern mode. Simple so, mode And, and how difficult it, are the wild supers? I think they were just like f a direction with a couple of buttons or something like that. So hmm. it was significantly easier to pilot the game. I don't know what the push and pull is in terms of like, so why wouldn't I always use modern mode? You know, what, is there a reasoning behind it? I don't understand that. But there was conscious effort from the devs to be like, our games are hard to control. We need to make this easier for some people. We're trying to make this game accessible without losing the depth. So I, it's clear that I, they're doing they're working on that direction. I have to imagine it's still the same thing. It's like taking away an attack button or something. Maybe. Right? Like, it has you to know. take away something. Maybe damage nerfs, possibly. Possibly. I, 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 I didn't get a chance to play it. 
there is some actual pretty decent like kind of like auto combo y things kind of like KOF 15 has that can functionally work in some directions, but they aren't like optimal by any means. Justin, did you say it's called simple mode? I think it's called simple mode, I believe. All right. SNK, listen up. You call S this mode easy operation. Simp mode. <laughs> Just call this uh, uh, Fatal Fury City of the Wolves EO. Then that, that there you borrow that from Capcom. Capcom doesn't own that. <laughs> it was it was in a game that half your characters started. You I just call just, it easy operation. I I was really <laughs> surprised at how much Street Fighter Six isms are throughout this game. Yeah. Like it was almost surprising. Like we just have a drive impact now. We just have a gauge that refills over time. You start us at full gauge and it comes back. We can do things to manipulate it and bring it back. Fast. This is really Street Fighter. <laughs> There's like, it's different on a fundamental level because you're going to be playing. The, what, what is good is going to be different throughout these games. But it being like a strike throw counter hit focused green shit coming back drive impacty kind of game. I was like, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Because our last news episode, we were kind of thinking like, oh, I wonder what they're going to do. And I was kind of like, I the, they're not going to bring back the line system. But I was like, I wonder if they're going to do something with like stages. Like, you know, you can interact with the stage a little bit, jump off stuff, like, you know, uh, something like that. I did not expect like, here's just a ton of fucking systems on top of oh, fucking yeah. systems. And a lot of them are cool or interesting. Yeah. Like, Max, when you stepped away for a second, Justin reminded uh, reminded that, like, when you hit your, what, level three super, you get all your hit, rev gauge uh, yes. down to zero. That's an incredible mechanic. That's super smart. Super smart. Yeah. So uh, there's another thing that's going to make you very excited, Matt, just in general. And I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about, like, vibe and feel when you're playing this game. Right. Um. This game gives you the vibes and feels of a 90s era SNK game. It yeah. feels that way. I'm not even talking about like mechanically or just the way characters look and shit. The entire like pro product presentation when you're just watching shit happening from the the introduction of characters, how they work, this like goddamn, this feels 90s SNK AF, bro. More so than any of the 3D efforts of any of their games they have had with Samurai Showdown, much less KOF 15, KOF 14, any of that shit, right? This mm. one feels like oh, this is this is throwing us back to like the mid 90s or some shit. And I, I, I told them, like, I got I get in this feel from the game and they said, that's a conscious effort. We're trying to make it feel old school. Nice. I mean, it also makes sense because even though it's 25 years or, or will be 25 years when this game comes out over the last game, it's still like a sequel of like, what, months, a year or two after the last one. So oh, yeah. that's that's when we see characters like Hotaru and um Tzok, for example, and they're the exact same character, like design wise. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Cause it's unlike Street Fighter 4, where it was like, oh no, this is a prequel game, so you don't get progression for your character design. You have the same characters. That's yeah. why Sakura looks like this, versus like Street Fighter 6 or, you know, like even Tekken Tekken 8. So I was like, that's that's neat. It's just a sequel. We're not jumping forward another 20 years. Although Silver Fox Terry would be pretty hot if it was like an older, older Terry. Older but... Terry. Maybe we'll get there eventually, maybe. Oh, hopefully. Um, the only other thing I uh, like, Max, is rock good? <laughs> I imagine uh, he must be. It, there, was, there was another, like, even on the dev front, they, they almost gave me um, a, a mention of like a don't worry. Because <laughs> I, I've already had several conversations with Otisan, you know, like pretty much people that made the old character back in the day, and they knew Rock was trash. So they're yeah. like, we have to do something about this. And he convinced me in KOF 15, he will not be bad. I'm sorry, 14, he won't be bad. And in KOF 15, he was obviously super good at the start when he came out, right? And he's still a really yeah. good character. So they were sort of like, don't worry, he's going to be good. They, they gave Rock, um, they've given Rock several new things. He also just has Geese's Air Repukin. Shippukin. Yes. He has that, that. And there you can you do it out of EX. They're good. Their trajectory is hella good. You can um you can hyper hop it, so you can do it really low off the ground too. I was like, that's, that's gonna get nerfed. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna get nerfed. <laughs> um so but yeah, he's extremely fun. And he's also his his super secret special is uh Power Geyser. He learned it from Terry. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he does I Terry's big ass power geyser. Because I wasn't sure if that bit in the trailer was just a bit. 
Like I thought it was like, oh, look at this. Uh, he's going to do this in the story mode or something. Yeah. Or is that a functional super? No, it's and I was a functional like, that super. Has to be, that's awesome. He, I think he loses Neo Deadly Rave. And which is yeah. maybe thematically closer to his father, like, you know, evil blood yeah. boils type shit. Instead, now he's doing Terry shit because Terry is my real dad. So Aww. it's neat. Like there's there's a little bit of storytelling going on there. Yeah, I also saw in the English voice cast, like a lot of the voice actors are like, I'm so excited for this. The guy that's playing Terry. I listened to the Terry voice. I was like, actually, that's really good. Like, it doesn't yeah. even sound off from regular like Japanese VA Terry. Um, I even saw someone that I worked with on the takeover. Uh, Jalen Castle plays t And I was yeah. like, oh, that's cool, too. But it that just ab- above everything else that just struck me as whoa. This is SNK saying, let's let's try to do little things hard. to yeah. 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 This this game very much comes across as a conscious effort from SNK to to recapture nostalgia. And there was only one game that SNK has put out over the past like 10 years that has effectively done that, and it was Samurai Showdown. And they reaped the rewards. Samurai Showdown sold a lot. Like for for an SNK fighting game, it sold very well. So I think this game is is clearly going to be like we're bringing Fatal Fury back for the modern audience, but we're going to make it feel as close to old Fatal Fury as possible. You you does your this definitely comes across as like a game for your dad kind of situation. So they're trying to capture that sort of element, but also make it visually feel like, oh, damn, this shit has never looked like this before. Holy crap. Hmm. So I, I've I have been thoroughly made jealous. So. Congratulations, I guess. Hey, we're going to go to Evo. Evo's like in a, a few months or something like that. Yeah, we'll be playing yeah, it soon. Just, I just have to wait four fucking months. Great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>